Let's talk about three methods of splicing electrical wires correctly. But first, let's talk about what not to do when splicing electrical wires. This method of twisting two wires together is very common. And it seems there's nothing wrong with it. But in fact, it results in a very weak mechanical bind. This is a safety hazard. Let me show you three correct and reliable splicing methods. In this first method, you don't need any connectors. First, split the pair of the electrical cord to over 50 millimeters or 2 inches long. Then strip the insulation off to expose around 50 millimeters or 1.5 inches. Leave the strands loosely, but together. Do not twist the strands. Do the same to the other wire. And the same to the other pair of wires you intend to splice them to. Pick a spot around one-third of the way from the tip of the insulations to wrap over. Don't cross them at the center or higher. Wrap the right wire tightly around the wire on the left. Then wrap the left wire tightly around the wire on the right. When you're done, do a pull test. You'll find that the bind between the two wires is strong and cannot be loosened easily. Then wrap the bare wires with an electrical tape, making sure you overlap the electrical tape over the start and the end of the wire insulations. Then splice the other pair of wires using the same method. When you're done with the other pair, tape both pairs of splices with an electrical tape together.
Here you can see the splice is strong and ready. By the way, if you like the video so far, you may want to take this time to click subscribe. Now to continue. Another method is to use a connector commonly known as a twist nut. As you can see, there's a spiral spring embedded in the nut that grips the tip of two wires together to allow you to twist them. And there are a variety of sizes and colors as well. This knot here has an outer length of 2 centimeters or 3 fourth inches. Let's measure the depth to determine how long we should strip the wires to be spliced. The depth is around 15 millimeters, so the rule of thumb is to strip less than that. Make sure the tip of the pair of wires are cut flush to each other. I'll strip the wire to around 10 millimeters. Do the same to the other wire. and do the same to the other pair of wires to be spliced. For this method, you need to twist the wires a little bit, not too tightly though. Hold and align side by side the two wires to be spliced together. Do not twist them together though. Then insert them together into the twist nut all the way to the end. Then twist the nut until you feel a firm resistance preventing further twisting. Perform a pull test to be sure. Do the same procedure to the other pair of wires. There you go. This is a good, reliable connection, although it may look awkward to some people. A third method is with the use of lever nuts or lever connectors. So instead of twisting the wires together, it uses a clip mechanism to clamp the wires using lever action. Lever nuts also come in different designs. Let's prepare the wires to be spliced. First, make sure the tip of the pair of wires are cut flush to each other. Then let's determine the depth, both when the lever is open and closed. The measured depth of the clip is around one quarter of an inch or 
six and a half millimeter. Strip the wire insulation longer than this. I'm going to strip around 11 to 12 millimeters. Make sure to twist each stranded wire tightly. Open both levers of one side, then insert the wires all the way before closing the levers. Perform a pull test to make sure. If the wires are not fully inserted, the wires won't be clamped properly and can easily be pulled out. As I've demonstrated here. At the same time, there's going to be poor electrical connection. Now let's put this back. Perform the same procedure for the other side. Now we're done and perform a pull test. There you have it. You now have three reliable splicing methods to choose from. If you find this video useful, please like and subscribe and ring the bell.